Science is amazing. Using certain criteria, we can categorise areas of scientific study into more specific sections like biology, chemistry, physics and geology. Then we can divide it into specialised subsections. For example, biology can be broken down into the study of botany and zoology. Science is amazing because all the different branches and subsections of science are connected in one way or another. In this section, we're examining organic molecules, the precursors to life, which is biology. However, these molecules had to undergo a myriad of chemical reactions to actually become organic molecules. This is chemistry. Evidence of these early chemical reactions is found by studying rock formations and the geological conditions of early Earth, which is geology. The fact that the Earth itself is here at all was due to atoms and molecules following the basic principles of physics. So to assist our study of the origin of life, we have to have some understanding of the other studies of science and how they interact. It's a good thing that scientists collaborate. Earth's early atmosphere had undergone a number of changes over its first half a billion years. It's believed that at the time organic molecules began to form, the atmosphere was made up of water vapour, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane, ammonia and sulphurous gases such as sulphur dioxide. Scientists also believe that the early oceans would have contained mixtures of salts, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulphide, nitrogen and other inorganic chemicals. On top of that, the Earth was bombarded by ultraviolet radiation because of the absence of an ozone layer. This strange brew seems to have just the right ingredients for the beginnings of life. Over the years, many scientists have wondered and hypothesised how an Earth filled with only inorganic molecules ended up forming organic molecules, the precursors to life. One theory suggests that organic molecules may have come from the cosmos. This theory comes from the fact that meteorite fragments that collided with Earth contained organic molecules. Another major theory, the Oprah and Haldane theory, is that the right ingredients existed on Earth already and the atmospheric conditions on early Earth may have been suitable for certain chemical reactions to take place that would result in organic molecules. This was something that scientists could investigate. In 1953, a biochemistry student, Stanley Miller, and his supervisor, Professor Harold Urey, tested the Oprah and Haldane hypothesis. They created an apparatus that closely simulated the conditions believed to be present on early Earth. What these simulations produced was groundbreaking. Just what did Urey and Miller do? The apparatus was set up in a laboratory, like in the diagram. The boiling water represented the oceans. It was mixed with ammonia, methane and hydrogen and then heated. The vapour produced simulated Earth's early atmosphere. The electrical discharge at the top of the apparatus simulated the lightning that was present in the Earth's atmosphere due to all of the volcanic activity on its surface. The gases were then passed through the condenser for cooling. When the gas cooled, it condensed to become a liquid. Over a number of weeks, the resulting liquid was analysed. After just a few days, the liquid was no longer colourless, but had darkened in colour, indicating that some type of chemical reaction had occurred. The liquid was analysed, and they found that 10 to 15% of the carbon was now in the form of organic compounds. 2% of that compound had formed amino acids. The evidence showed that 13 of the 21 amino acids produced in the dark broth are ones used to make proteins in living cells, with glycine the most abundant. The molecules were simple organic molecules, but the experiments showed that under certain conditions, organic molecules could be formed from inorganic molecules. Urey and Miller's results strongly supported the Oprah and Haldane hypothesis. But what is the significance of the Urey and Miller experiment? 
Before the experiment, there was no evidence to support the Oprah and Haldane hypothesis. But after their experiment, and subsequent similar experiments carried out by other scientists, there is now reliable evidence to support the theory that the raw materials for organic molecules existed on the early Earth and that the conditions necessary for the reactions to convert inorganic molecules to organic molecules were present. Although there is now evidence to support the Oprah and Haldane theory, there are still questions about how close the experimental conditions were to the actual early atmosphere of Earth, with some scientists now questioning whether the energy for the reaction may have come from the ultraviolet radiation rather than the lightning and even some questioning the lack of oxygen in the environment. But healthy scientific debate is always a good thing, as it leads to more investigations, which leads to more answers, and even more questions that we can investigate further. And whilst this evidence is critical to the study of life, it's a long way off from establishing how these organic molecules began to form functioning cells. But at least we seem to be heading in the right direction.